it's really the phenomenal success of the U81 that enabled us to be able to take on this development. The idea that the, that the product has had a seven year uh, life is pretty remarkable and I think it's a testament to one, just how powerful that card was at the time that it came out and two, just how popular our plug-in titles are. We uh, really wanted to, to, to break all the existing limitations on our U81 uh, DSP card. Uh, and allow for just about any kind of plugin to be uh, run on this uh, U82 in the future. An environment where we can do signal processing without having to worry about the constraints of processing power. And so that was the idea years ago when the U81 first came out and that's exactly the same idea that this represents is we can do what we want, it's a palette. The very first product definition started out in 2004 but we felt that the original prototype wasn't quite uh, as powerful a statement as we wanted to make. And we went back to the drawing board and, uh, and produced the product that we did because we felt we needed to leapfrog the competition. We added significant memory. We went to a much more flexible DSP architecture, namely the Shark. The Shark does actually stand for something. It stands for Super Harvard Architecture Computer. 32-bit floating point uh, DSP. Floating point is precision. It's really the simplest way to say it. Architectures that have Dual multiply accumulates in a single instruction, which effectively give you very high computational power. The part has been designed with Pro Audio in mind. Best in class audio path uh, is, is really where we shine. The peak performance is well over two gigaflops per second. Which again, lends itself to concurrent processing, doing many computations in a single cycle of the processor. Uh, very important for real-time applications. We were able to estimate that the number of our plugins that we could run would more than meet our, our objectives. Bring all the, together the internal memory, the interfaces that you have for particularly audio applications. Audio input and output, sample rate conversion. SPDIF, high-speed serial ports. The ability to do native decoding. These chips are very, very complex multiple layers, years and years of development, thousands of man hours. It's not just science fiction. There are people that are constantly squinting through uh, electron microscopes. This stuff that's on a microscopic level requires a tremendous amount of analysis and data gathering. Many, many layers, uh, many, many, you know, thousands and thousands of, of transistors and components go into uh, the development of these products. What we're looking at here is a blank slate. This is a, a general purpose machine. What comes in and out of this um, is entirely dependent on the software that's written for it. And that's where Universal Audio comes in, that's where the developers come in, and the thousands of hours they've put into developing this product. You can think of the chip as a Formula One race car, right? Now, Formula One race cars are all about power and speed. The same thing can be said for the Shark. It's about power, it's about speed, it's about precision engineering. A Formula One race car just sits there, unless you have a great driver and a great pit crew. And that's what Universal Audio has brought to the table here. They've got a great driver, and they've got the most amazing pit crew in the business. The fact that uh, Universal Audio has chosen to put four of these top-of-the-line chips on a single board uh, is nothing short of astounding. We don't anticipate that any of the conceivable plugins that we could develop in the future will be limited by the card. So now the, the, the best-sounding plugs are, are available on the most powerful DSP co-processing platform.